Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to look at the Sapodilla trees, the Chico Sapote Nispero. I think we have about 15 trees. This is one right here. This is a Hazia. And after the freeze two years ago, they took a year off producing. A couple of them got some freeze damage, but most of them were fine. And then it didn't really set any fruit when it was so hot. Uh, it just kept flowering and flowering and flowering. Others did, but this one did not. This, the tree's getting pretty big now. It's 12 feet. Of course, they're all dry farmed. This is my little uh, miniature bull calf, Romy. He's about uh, nine months old now, and he's definitely all halter broke. These are not for eating. This is for farm fertility. I had somebody want to know if I don't eat them, what do we use them for? I, I thought I explained that in just about every video. Um, I, I think people are joking when they say st ask stuff like that, but I think I thoroughly explained what they're for. And if somebody could eat this little boy, no, they're not ever going to do that. Why would you eat a $4,000 bull calf? <clears throat> That's like super good for fertility. So I'm also going to talk about PFASs. This is another sapodilla that is right next to the path that probably I should like get it to grow upright more. It's a Tikal sapodilla, I believe. But anyway, here we go. I'm going to go look at the rest of them. So the PFAs, you know, the forever chemicals, uh, since I've been on a like, anti-pollution kick on these latest videos, which people seem to respond well to, I really don't understand anybody that would have a problem with these videos, but some people do. And, uh, you, you know, you can't, you can't explain stuff to everyone. Everyone's not going to agree. But anyway, forever chemicals, I guess they're like the, going to be the, the, uh, they're like the, the worst chemicals out there because they build up in your body and they're so pre prevalent now. Uh, they go through the air and water. They found them in remote places and they were developed in the 1930s by DuPont and um, they started <clears throat> uh, using them uh, uh, a lot in the, like, the last 40 years. I guess they've always been using them a lot, but uh, they didn't discover that they, well, they discovered, DuPont knew that they were caused, like, all these health issues, liver cancer, immune problems, deformities in children, thyroid issues, just the list goes on and on and on since the 1960s, that's what I was going to say. So for 60 years they'd known this, but they didn't tell anybody until somebody studied them in uh, 2018 and discovered that they could have potentially horrible health, adverse health effects on humanity and life. And uh, so they move in water and in Florida Citrus, Florida Natural is being class action lawsuit is being sued for the PFAs in the all natural, you know, it's a synthetic substance in the all natural brand. So the lawsuits are starting 2021. They started class action lawsuits. Most, not most, but some states have joined the lawsuits, but for some reason, Florida isn't in up on it. So this is like the BPA and Teflon and stuff. And uh, when I like, I, I buy bottled water because I was paranoid about water. So uh, we, got, we got it at Costco and we got the BPA free bottles. Well, thank you, thankfully my friend Frank said, Crystal Springs doesn't use BPA bottles. I said, well, they have to be BPA. I, I, I signed a contract for BPA bottles. Well, I looked at the number underneath the Crystal Springs bottle and sure enough, it was a BPA bottle. So they for some reason people are allowed to pollute you here in florida without any effects so it's very discouraging and since the for 50 years florida citrus has been using reclaimed water uh, sewage water for citrus 
Citrus, uh, I looked at the University of Florida. I'm gonna lighten up on them a little bit today because everyone knows now uh, what they are pushing, chemicals. Uh, they have to be for them to like not have a, a, a world famous organic program in place because it's just that easy to grow organically here. So the water, so that the, you reclaim water, they figure and sewage sludge, which they make fertilizer from for a lot of people who still use, uh, is full of BP, uh, uh, forever chemicals, PFASs. And that's how it wound up in the Florida natural orange juice pulp-free orange juice, I guess, but thousands of acres they have been using for 50 years uh, here, and aren't, it's not discussed. Um, so I've been so paranoid about the, uh, so I, we have tons of citrus that produce well, the ones that are old enough to produce, and don't have a greening issue on our fruit. Um, but Florida Citrus uh, recommends 19 to 29 gallons of water per day per tree. Oh my God. I, I've never watered our citrus, none of them. When you have a system like this, you don't have to. Uh, this system, the living root, the orchard, living orchard floor, they've shown in studies, current new studies, that it's two to 13 times more uh, beneficial than uh, leaf litter or litter on the ground, carbon on the ground like mulch. Two to 13 times better. I'm sure our system is 13 times better. And if you're, uh, if you're, you have the living root in the ground, it buffers the pH uh, for your plants. And that's why people that don't have this living root system in Florida have uh, issues with pH low pH, even though we're on calcareous rock and they can't uptake nutrients like calcium and have to add gyps gypsum and stuff like that. Even though we're on calcareous rock, it never made sense to me. But so uh, soil aggregates with the high pH, which you get, or the, the middle of the road pH, aggregates form in this, it, it captures the PFAs that are float through the air and it's less likely for them to leach into your, so into your groundwater. So I was all paranoid about our groundwater because we have wells here. And, and I thought, because I connected our deep well to some of the trees for a few months, like seven months, seven, eight months. It didn't work, so I stopped using it. it just for a brief time, we've been here eight years. Didn't wa we don't water anything. But my partner thought that the water would help. So just to make him happy, because they put the wells in, I connected stuff to water but showed he clearly saw that it wasn't helping so I said I'm taking them off the water because I'm paranoid about the, the PFAs and the chemicals and the, the pollution in the well water well it turns out that high pH water which you get when you have living root or you have a deep well and our well that we use for water is 550 feet deep so it's all calcium carbonate so it's a high pH water high pH is less likely to uh, have uh, PFAs in it. So, because I wasn't gonna st sell any of our fruit if I thought I had been using PFAS water. I just, I just, and I, you know, I just wasn't gonna do it. So I felt rest assured that everything is okay. And then our well water, you can, you can get rid of the uh, PFAs by um, using a reverse osmosis system. We have one outside the house at our well, and then we have one inside the house, and we also structure our water twice. Structured water is very important. Um, look it up. Uh, you have to look it up yourself. So the whole water thing and the pollution and the PFAs and the sewer sludge and the, the reclaimed water that they've been using for years on farmland, obviously, the fruit or any plant that you grow in it or animals that you raise on it is going to have a, a higher concentration of PFAs. It, in the food, it goes right into the food, especially when you use chemicals and they just allow the plant to suck up all the water without filtering it out first. When you have living biota in there and you rely on fungi and biology, that kind of has a, a <clears throat> nature buffers the issues with man-made uh, 
issues, pollutants and stuff. Not all of them, but you're more likely to get a uh, healthy outcome from a, uh, a all natural growing method. Not Florida natural, but an all natural, like r r copied, uh, uh, copied from nature. <clears throat> so I've talked about this. I've been talking about the PFAs, I think, for two or three years. I did a video on them a long time ago in 2020, I believe. And um, <sighs> I've talked about the septics probably being a source of uh, forever chemicals. Well, just to uh, say we're on a septic here and we have a shallow well but we have this so it buffers the it buffers the uh, pH in the soil when you have a living root in the soil in sand so it's less likely that the PFAs can leach in through rain into the groundwater it happens but it's less likely to happen because it gets caught in the soil aggregates it binds it up binds up pollutants it binds up all that stuff man-made uh, pollution and so Indian River County uh, thankfully is trying to convert everyone that lives in tract homes to uh, sewers they realize there's a problem I know they're aware of the PFAs because uh, I had somebody that uh, does sewage and water uh, reclamation work and uh, they I talked to them about PFAs and they wanted to buy the farm if they still were interested in buying it I would sell it to them for the price I told them originally they're young people and you know possibly didn't have the I my partner doesn't really want to sell but I, I want to sell he like got very upset um, stressed him out they're going to Tokyo so uh, they're under a little stress anyway <clears throat> but yeah we still want to sell and I'm gonna sell I bet I want the right buyer that's why it's not listed with a real estate agent so but they're, they're not all the cities. Sebastian is the entire city of 25,000 completely on septics. And so when they build houses in Sebastian, they're all on septics, which is a source of PFASs, <clears throat> septics. They're in a Palm Beach. One of every three houses in Florida is on a septic. I'm working my way over to some more sapodilla trees. And um, we have some with fruit. And... They are a source of forever chemicals. Uh, and if you grow food around them, your food, your fruit uh, is going to be, have, be laced with forever chemicals. So I know some people, somebody has been by here that said they use their own human manure to grow their food. Uh, that's like uh, you're asking for disease, but um, uh, that's a whole nother topic. I'm not even gonna get into it, it's gross. But, um, uh, so the septics have the PFAs in it and then when on mowed lawns your soil is acidic because you don't have organic matter in the sand which turns the soil acidic and so the uh, PFAs can move throughly, freely through the soil because it's being inserted directly in the soil and then they build it uh, when we had our wells built they want to know where our septic was and they put it far away from our, our septic. But in, in Sebastian, the new houses, they put a shallow well at every house and a septic at every house. And they're all close together. I mean, they're like one, one here and right over there, or front and backyard. But still, it's like 10,000 square foot lot, max. And uh, yeah, you see what's going on. So <clears throat> when you use the well water, it disperses the... Uh, forever chemicals into the air and distributes them throughout your yard they tell you it's for a landscaping but I know everyone grows fruit trees in their yard just about uh, so guaranteed that if you have a septic and you are uh, mowing your yard and especially if you're using uh, fertilizer water soluble fertilizers you probably have a major PFAS problem in your uh, fruit in your from your yard. Now, Florida allows this pollution, 
obviously, um, eventually it's going to be, they're going to have to shut down 3M. They've polluted the entire world. They're going to have to shut down uh, DuPont. Uh, they're not going to be able to pay for all the damage they've done. Look at the cacao. It's like full of freaking blooms and there's fruit on it. So we should have a good fruit set this year. To say that cacao cannot handle cold, yeah, if you're using chemicals, it can't in Florida. But when you have this, it can, you know, the living root that is twice as good as mulch. <clears throat> Up to 13 times as good as mulch. It does not compete with the trees. I mean, look at how close the grass is. Look at how close the grass is to all the na natural trees here. If it was bad form, stuff wouldn't be doing so well. It's not. That's just those studies saying that grass competes with trees were done on annuals. So period. That's what it is. <clears throat> and if you're using 19 gallons of water or 29 gallons of water per day per tree of citrus on 140 40, uh, plant per acre grove <sighs> uh, of reclaimed water, my God. I know in Michigan or Parkersburg, Blackwater, uh, they, I used to live right near Parkersburg, West Virginia. I think that's probably where I got my thyroid issues. I could smell battery acid at night when I came home from work at two in the morning. Uh, we lived there a very short time because they said, this can't be healthy, it's something wrong here. So we moved, they wouldn't allow us to drill well either. So that was a big red flag. Wouldn't give us a permit for it. So the, the well water with the septics for your landscape and you turn it on, it's called dispersion and it creates a, uh, look at the, the uh, fungi that is like in our soil, that white stuff. That filters, that di distributes water here. Uh, I know it does. Uh, that's why we don't have drought issues. That's why we can grow heliconia without ever watering them and during the worst droughts probably I've ever seen here in the summer. Um, but so it disperses it through the air. The, uh, the PFAs are in like uh, American cheese wrappers are in p most plastics. I'm sure I have a whole house full of them. Um, that's how it winds up in your septic. It's in the, the non-staining like uh, fabrics, uh, waterproof fabrics, uh, stuff like that. And um, it's in most of your fast food wrappers. Though I saw that Popeyes and a few others were uh, have switched over. Burger King was going to switch over. They hadn't yet but it's in all that stuff where grease doesn't stick to stuff. And where it's really bad is at uh, landfills. So around landfills, I didn't want to live anywhere near a landfill when we were looking for a property. Uh, I know a lot of people that have houses around the landfills, but I would not never ever buy a land near a landfill or uh, has gas uh, PFASs around it. so sad what America has done to the world um, with just a few people doing it. And it's so sad that people get on board and will fight you um, to try to uh, tell them what's wrong. They just don't want to hear it. I kind of understand that because for a while I made videos and then I just got so burnt out that I just wanted to be stupid for a while. So I got my medical marijuana card and I just I didn't smoke it, but I ate edibles and stuff and it really made me not care and I really didn't read much. And it just, that's why my videos, the last videos before I started doing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, pollution videos were so uh, monotone and boring. And, you know, it really didn't, I mean, they were okay, but you know, they, they I just did like two videos or, one video a week, I think, is what I was doing because I was uh, sedating myself. But I came to the realization through this space, I ha uh, this farm, I had a mystical experience here and um, uh, I uh, stopped doing that that day and uh, I'm not going to ever do it again. And because of that, my mind turned back on. So I do understand that it's good to like in this world of... Um, uh, all the fast moving and pollution and inflammation and disease. It's kind of good to dumb yourself down. So I totally get that. 
I used to drink, I don't drink. I don't eat meat. I'm pretty boring. I used to be lots of fun, but I'm kind of boring now. Boring and old. I feel it's my job to like inform people and try to help them. So another source of PFASs, which is really sad, is artificial turf. Artificial turf, where they put in schools, they put in malls, they put around children, people put it in their yard in California. So if you put that on the ground, your ground is going to be polluted with forever chemicals forever. <clears throat> Just saying along with the shade cloth, probably plastic screens for houses have it. It's just, you can't get away from it. I can't get away from it, but you can do things like this that buffers it by putting more nature into your system. I mean, how anybody could think that wood chips looks better than this is kind of strange to me or a mowed lawn. <clears throat> this is what Florida does when you let it be by itself and obviously the mango trees so our septic is way up by the house up there and then this is like a mango tree so I'm not going to sell any fruit from around these trees here just for the simple fact I'll eat it myself because I figured you know I'm already older I'm less likely to like really hurt myself but I sure wouldn't sell anybody fruit from uh areas that have uh near the septic. I'm putting my vegetable garden right downhill from it. <clears throat> it's not our fault that we do these things. It's the fault of the, the, the people that are making the polluters that lied for 50 years until 2018, until they got caught. But yet they still deny it. And they have plants in the Netherlands that have like totally ruined the shellfish. And then they try to say that they uh, burn it out and it's safe. Look at this big jackfruits oh my god the tree is like so good and the seedlings from it do really good so here's the sapodilla i just walked right by <clears throat> and this one is uh silas wood that's got a lot of fruit on it i had some big fruit on uh, silas wood but the rabbits and the squirrels seem to like it. I'm okay with uh, sapodillas, but they really are like um, too sweet for me now. I used to love sweet fruit, but they're like too sweet. So I, I really have not made videos of our sapodillas and I haven't planted any more of them. We got enough, I feel. Uh, I did plant some at different stages. So some are bigger than others. Here's another Silas wood. They produce really well, the sapodillas, and you really don't have to do too much to them. I saw Bill Gates was going after the biggest source of uh, gas in, um, in the world was from cows. Yeah, cows that are not being raised regeneratively. So not rotationally grazed cows on pasture, cows in feedlots and dairy cows in barns are a big, biggest source of methane, as big as agri other, other agriculture chemicals and stuff like that. Um, and there's a uh, nice looking fruit. Uh, Silas wood is very good. So those, those, and then I have one that's my favorite and I'm gonna mark, work my way over to it. I have a few others that are smaller, but I didn't even bother showing those. I think I'll look at my MB because it has a big second crop on it. So yeah, it, cows that are not raised holistically are going to uh, produce a lot of methane. But if you have a rotationally grazed clean pasture that you haven't polluted with chemicals and, and uh, reclaimed water, then you probably have the bacteria in it that uh, uh, when the cow burps, the bacteria uh, breaks down the methane. Meth There's a name for them, it's methyl, I can't think of it. Look at this uh, uh, MB tree. So this MB tree is probably the highest producing tree on our farm, just for size. I mean, it's, uh, it's gotten a lot bigger and it had only produced, produces one huge crop a year, but now it started producing multiple crops. And this is the first time this ever happened, but it finally got of size. It's the trees here. You know, we're young, we're eight years old this year. Sorry, 
starting our eighth year in October and um, all the trees were planted at different times because I, I, I've done it all. I'm still doing it all. I just bought some pink wampy seeds and some uh, rambutan because my friend Jerry Young in Naples grows rambutan, no problem. He grows durian, no problem. Three years in the ground. He's fruited a single lone Nocleolatifolia, so I know it's dioecious. And um, he just does amazing things. So it's inspired me to try, even though we're a little further north, but we have all this biology here. And I do know that the more plants you have, the more likely your tree is not gonna be affected by 31 degrees. I guess sapodillas can take down to 26 when they're mature. Look at this Luke's Garcinia. It didn't put out any new leaves until it started cooling off. It's finally cooled off here. Oh, finally I can plant my garden. Tomorrow I'm gonna plant my vegetable garden even though it's right down from the septic. We eat all organic. We don't eat at restaurants. We like do very clean. We only use like natural cleaners or like vinegar or um, lactose bacillus on like cement floors. Uh, to remove stains and stuff or like calcium buildup from the water and so our water our well our septic water is probably cleaner than most people's uh, the problem with the septics is they eat all this stuff and then they eat all the pesticides and they drink the toxic orange juice that has the pfas in it from florida and then they it all mixes together and creates a toxic super mess that's why I say that probably whole cities in Florida are, could be considered super fun sites. Probably if this was 1970 and they knew the information they knew now, they would, they would do an about face instantly. But for some reason, everyone just accepts it now. That's why I speak up. I speak up for the children. They're gonna hate us old people in another 20 years guaranteed and blame us for everything. And I just don't wanna be a part of sitting around and not doing anything. So even if we sell this place, even if we sell it, I'm gonna continue doing these. I will just do it somewhere else. I can't stop, I don't think. Here's my uh, Thai constellation, uh, Monstera Deliciosa. It tried to go all green on me, but it still has some stuff. It's in sun here, the rabbits like to eat the uh, eat the uh, Monstera Deliciosa. So pretty here. So yeah, you don't have to water anything. It's zero maintenance, this place. Zero maintenance. I just mow the paths and then I walk around and I clear the paths when I need to. I use a, a cordless electric hedge trimmer to like make the paths, the ginger, clear passable. And then I use a an electric battery operated chainsaw that I use uh, organic olive oil in as the chainsaw oil to cut uh, logs and stuff that fall and block my uh, my egress and exit through the property. <clears throat> and everything grows here. You don't have to fertilize anything. I don't know why they tell people you have to fertilize orchids. That's just not true. You don't have to water them. You just put them in the trees and walk away here. That's all you have to do. Yeah, we just really need to cut back on all these chemicals. I knew that not to use, I mean, I would never use reclaimed water on my food crops ever. So they have to take a little bit of responsibility just for uh, embracing that free water or sewage sludge, definitely I would not ever put on my property. I guess sewage sludge was a major source of PFASs, uh, mass buildup in cattle that have been fed the grass or the hay from these uh, these uh, farms that used use that stuff. It's sad, um, I feel for the farmers, but I knew not to do it. I knew not to use the water. I just knew these things. I just, I don't know why I do. I was raised that way in Northern California, Southern California around San Diego is a lot less um, open-minded as far as the toxins that uh, chemicals can pose, probably because there's so much military base there or something, I don't know. My husband of 28 years 
is a retired lieutenant colonel in the Marine Corps, an A6 aviator. So um, I'm pro-military. I'm third generation Marine family. So uh, my grandfather was a captain in the Marine Corps. So I'm well aware of uh, military uh, people. Uh, I don't know where that came from, but this is the last, <laughs> must be time to end the video. This is the, my favorite sapodilla. I don't know what it is. It's finally getting big. It's got some fruit up there, but it's about uh, 12, 15 feet tall now. And the fruit is really good on it. I don't know what it is. It's not anything I have had before, but it's easily the best uh, sapodilla we have on the farm. And I can't wait to get the fruit off of it, even though I am not that fond. Of, this is Black Beauty. I believe that's our best um, uh, black sapote on the farm. Anyway, I hope you find this helpful. And I'm sorry if you live in uh, an area that has septic tanks. Um, but there are ways to buffer it. And one of it is the living uh, orchard floor, which is 2 to 13 times better at everything than mulch. So uh especially on sand uh, it's the you know the sand that turns acidic which allows uh the pfas to move through freely <clears throat> anyway <laughs> this is florida natural farm at frog valley tropical fruit farm and i hope you have an excellent day stay healthy speak up about these issues share like and subscribe um, thank you for watching i appreciate it